One more segment here. Uh, Russell, good news. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe this is maybe this is light. Maybe this is not. I don't know. Depends on your point of view. Uh, and we have our sound cue for the Starliner story. This is ground control to Major Tom. All right. So the good news is they're coming back. The bad news is it's not going to be until February. They were supposed to be there for eight days. They Butch Wilmore and uh, his co-astronaut, I forget her name off the top of my head. They're going to Butch Wilmore. You just can't forget that name. Uh, they are going to end up being there for eight freaking months. And guess who's going to be bringing them back? Elon! SpaceX to bring NASA astronauts back next year. Uh, two astronauts parked at the International Space Station since early June will return with SpaceX instead of on the Boeing vehicle that brought them there. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson announced the decision at a briefing on Saturday, which means astronauts, oh, they messed up his name, Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams. Oh, Barry Wilmore. <laughs> Barry Wilmore. <laughs> Barry Wilmore. Butch Wilmore. And Sunita Williams will remain in orbit until next February when a SpaceX craft is scheduled to return with them on board. Quote, our core value is safety, and it is our North Star, Nelson said. He said NASA wants to better understand the root causes of the technical challenges Starliner has faced. The decision is a setback for Boeing, which has spent years developing the Starliner vehicle that transported the astronauts to the space station on June 6th. During its flight to the station, several thrusters temporarily failed and engineers identified additional helium leaks within its propulsion system. In the weeks since, NASA and Boeing have tussled over those problems, trying to determine whether they would pose any threats if the vehicle left the station carrying the astronauts. NASA and the aerospace company are preparing to undock Starliner from the space station and transport it back to Earth in early September with no one on board. The decision to have SpaceX bring Wilmore and Williams back means both will spend about eight months in all at the ISS. Officials at the agency had initially planned for an eight-day mission focused on testing out Starliner, and at one point talked about getting them back to Earth in mid-June. Nelson said he had spoken with Kelly Ortberg, the new chief executive at Boeing. Ortberg expressed Boeing's intention to continue working on the challenges with Starliner, according to Nelson. A Boeing spokeswoman declined to comment on the company's plans for Starliner. Mark Nappy, a Boeing vice president overseeing Starliner, said Saturday in a message to company employees that the decision wasn't the one they had hoped for. Boeing has previously said the data that the company and NASA collected about Starliner's challenges showed that the vehicle was safe enough to conduct the return flight with both astronauts. Nappy said Boeing is ready to carry out actions necessary to support NASA's new plan. Quote, the focus remains first and foremost on ensuring the safety of the crew and spacecraft, he said in the message. So let me get this straight. The same company that blamed the first MAX crash on the foreign pilots in coded racist terms even though they knew in their internal communications that the plane had problems. Um, NASA didn't trust their judgment about whether to send the astronauts back in this uh, troubled capsule. I can't imagine why they didn't listen to you guys on that. Uh, NASA's call not to allow Boeing to try to return Williams and Wilmore is expected to raise questions about Starliner's future. Boeing has been working on the vehicle for more than a decade reporting more than $1.4 billion in losses after delays driven by software challenges, sticky valves, and the spacecraft's parachute system. Leaders at the agency have described intense internal debates over the past few weeks over what the thruster problems and helium leaks could mean if Wilmore and Williams departed on the spacecraft. 
Some former astronauts have credited the agency for taking its time to run tests and evaluate data before coming to any decision. On Saturday, NASA officials expressed disappointment with not being able to complete the Starliner flight as planned. They said they recognized the challenges that Wilmore and Williams families will face given the astronauts' extended stay on ISS. Quote, I know this is a huge impact to their families and it means a lot. Norm Knight, a NASA flight operations official, said at the briefing Saturday. The decision reinforces SpaceX's dominant role at NASA. Besides crew flights to the ISS, many of the agency's most important efforts run through the Elon Musk-led company, including future planned moon landings, launches of research satellites, and more. Quote, SpaceX stands ready to support NASA however we can, said a post from Gwen Shotwell, the company's president and operating chief on social media platform X. SpaceX in 2020 completed a test flight delivering NASA astronauts to the space station and bringing them back, building on previous cargo missions to the research facility that used a similar spacecraft. NASA officials for years have said the agency needed to have two different American vehicles capable of conducting crewed flights to the space station. After the space shuttle fleet was retired in 2011, NASA didn't have a way to reach the ISS from the U.S. and instead had to purchase rides from Russia. So that's actually what this has all been about. They were embarrassed to have to keep going to Russia to send their right. assets up. So they said, okay, well, for redundancy, we have to have two different ways to get to the space station. So they contracted SpaceX, they contracted Boeing, SpaceX pretty much did it on time. Uh, 2019 was the goal. I believe they did their first successful mission 2020. And uh, you can see what happened with Boeing. Now, a couple of things this article doesn't get into is there is a fear that they're not going to be able to undock the Boeing. They're not sure if that's even going to work. They had to send a software update that's so complex it took four weeks to send. It may still be sending now. Um, and there is a fear that, you know, maybe it crashes into the station when they try to undock it. They're, they can't guarantee that that's not going to happen. Um, so this is just one more thing for Boeing. Now they finally got an engineer in that would accept the job of CEO. They had a hard time getting any engineer who wants to take on this shit show and try to turn it around. Uh, but now they have one. Uh, but the Starliner was supposed to go out of service by 2030 anyway, because they're retiring the space station. So it seems like by the time they would fix this, it would be obsolete. My guess would be this is the end. They're never going to try to send that thing up again. I mean, how could they? And yeah. what a darkly comic episode it would be if, you know, Elon spacecraft gets up there and they can't get the they can't get either of them to work right. <laughs> they can't got Boeing and SpaceX up there and they can't get them off. I mean, obviously, we kid. We hope that does not happen. Obviously, we want those astronauts home safe. But man, what what a farce. What a farce. I mean, you talk about the end of everything. Just what a display of American capitalism, right? And then to have to well, spare themselves the humiliation of turning to the Russians, I guess we got to send Elon. Well, and and obviously the real irony here is, uh, on the one hand, the establishment is at war with Elon, right? But on but on the other hand, they're too dependent on him to crush him. If That's you right. wonder why they haven't gone full Alex Jones lawfare on Elon. That's why. Then, oh well, yeah. That's why. They're also, you know, he's got military contracts. Like, yeah, he's got yeah. he's got satellite contracts. Yep. If they yep. if they really go after him, they're not going to have a way to send anybody to the space station. They're going to have to go back to the Russians. Right. In the end, they'd rather deal with Elon than deal with the Russians. It's less. It's the less embarrassing of the two embarrassments. Right. Uh, but that that's why. Look, anytime the establishment really hates anyone as much as they hate Elon. 
you'd you'd see 25 lawsuits against this guy. Right. You don't see that, right? That's why. And, that's and why. I I also I mentioned friends close, went, enemies closer. Remember that. If any of you guys out there ever become that. the world's richest person, friends close, not, enemies closer. It's not personal. It's strictly business. Right. Um, when I went to the Griffin uh, Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, and I went to the space exhibit, which was actually quite good, um, it really shows you the trajectory of American society, although that's not its intention, because you see uh, the lunar rover, you see the Gemini capsule, all funded by the public, all government. And when you get to the end, the newest exhibit, it's a SpaceX capsule. Please clap.